right, so I want to talk to you guys about TJ Vasher, big physical guy, six foot six, can pull the ball out of the sky. It's a remarkable thing that the Cowboys are leaving no stone unturned. Now, my thing is with this particular guy, understand this. He's not the best of the route runners, but he is a red zone target. Let me repeat. He is a red zone target that will high point the ball. I believe he had 21 TDs in his career over there in college land. And, of course, when you're talking about somebody that got decent speed, He's around 210 pounds at that height. So, of course, he's a little slender, but he is a prototypical X receiver. You're not going to put him in the inside. You're not going to try to do all of this nuanced, crazy stuff from the interior as it relates to a route running because he'll get jammed and he won't get off of that release there pretty smoothly. But the guy can stand along on the island and he can pull that ball out of the sky. I've seen so many people hit me up and say, Law, you got to check him out, baby. You got to check him out. He is a dog. I like it. I love his skill set. So let me give him one of these little growls right here. Because he got to get one of those. Yeah. 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 So I believe he can hot point that ball and bring it out of the sky. So what do this mean for the Noah Browns, the Cedric Wilson, the Chris Lacey, also the semi kid that was uh, semi that was uh, drafted in the draft as well? They got another guy that they brought in from Mississippi State, uh, Mitchell. Uh, they got some other guys that they brought in for a cup of coffee. Look, you leave no stone unturned. You need special teamers. You need tall guys now. Simi, he's no one to sneeze at, too. He's six foot four, can take the top off the defense. Route running is a little suspect, but he's quick. And I've seen plays where they line him up inside. So this wide receiving room, it just depends on who is going to shine the most during this offseason and how they're going to figure out the competition aspect of it. Please do not sleep on Michael Gallup. Please do not sleep on Amari Cooper and what he brings to the table, as well as C.D. Lamb. We all know that those guys are the shoe-in positioning guys. And when you think about everything, think about Blake Jarwin, what he can do from the inside running routes too, although he's a tight end. Remember, in college, he was a wide receiver. So all of those things works out for the good. And, of course, I can't leave out Dalton Schultz, although he's going to be a short, short intermediate route guy. I think this offense still will be explosive. Regardless of how we look at it, we need we need to have more and more competition out there and understand that just because where a person falls at in a draft does not dictate where they're going to be at for their NFL careers. There's plenty of people that made the spotlights and these sorts of things and made a difference or was a difference maker after the draft was all said and done or was in the later of the rounds there. So. The Dallas Cowboys looking into this thing, leaving no stone unturned. Hey, it brings out a lot of good stuff for us. Uh, now, the list for these undrafted guys, uh, I'm just going to pull out this list real quick. You got Tyler Cole, a uh, linebacker from Purdue. He's going to try to figure out how he can fit into this system. He's a hybrid guy. He can play safety as well. You got Brandon Eagles, I think. He's a wide receiver from Texas, so we're going to look at his tape. He, he's the next guy on the list that I'm going to really dive into. And they've got Nick Eubanks, tight end, Michigan. Uh, Austin, defensive tackle from Oregon. I'm going to have to really look up him. I think it's Fulayo. <laughs> Fulayo. A Fuli. Austin Fuli. Y'all help me out. Put his name down in the bottom of the uh, the chat there. Uh, Jaquan Hardy, running back. You need those guys, especially during this time frame. Uh, it's always you're trying to figure out who can come in and be that special teams guy and who can fill in some of those roles as it relates to camp body. You need that. Braylon Jones, offensive lineman. You're never going to have too many of those. You already know what I'm about to say. Nobody want them until you need them. And you got Braden Knox, who running back for Marshall. We're going to have to take a real good look at his particular tape and see what he can bring to, out to the table. I'm just going to say Art Land, Artavius. I think that's how you say that one. Artavius Land from TCU. Art Land and that's what we're going to call it short for. And Osiris Mitchell, that's what his name is, from Mississippi State. We got Nick Ralston, fullback, Louisiana, you know. 
always need always need somebody that can help you out in those likes. And then you have Brandon Smith, wide receiver from Iowa, who should know some of the guys that's on his team already who can pull the ball out of the sky and you got TJ. Now, Anthony Hines, the third from Texas A&M, big game James, my dog, I just got off the show with him. He was saying that, hey, he working out already locally here in Dallas, and he, this guy is really, really focused in and want to showcase his talent out there. We'll find out what this team would do during this offseason. Look, when we talk about going over players' skill set and their abilities, it's not to sully or denigrate them if they're not up to the, your billings or not up to your likings for what we say. This is all us looking from the outside looking in. Now, when I looked at TJ film, again, I'm going to go back to TJ. Six foot six, tall, tall guy that can reach the ball out of the sky. Give God a handshake. That's how tall he is. He's six foot six. So it looks weird out there on the field. And nine times out of ten, if it's a jump ball, nine times out of ten, he, he he will he will challenge you to go and climb that ladder. And nine times out of ten, he will pull it down. So have we seen this before out of the Dallas Cowboys? No. This is a whole new philosophy on the offensive side and the defensive side because we got some tall guys on the defensive side as well. Will all of these guys make the team? No, no. There will be some hard cuts as well, but there will be a reality check during this offseason of what this team did with this draft. I don't give grades in the draft. I know that a lot of people are looking at it. Some classify this grading of the draft as an A. Some will classify this grading of the draft as a D. And then they are drafted. There's a whole, whole independent grade for that. But just let this thing play out. Let's see how the Cowboys will formulate everything midway through the offseason and then to, to down through the first preseason game and then after week one and week two remember it takes three years to give a full full grade of the draft but let's see how Dan Quinn implement his philosophy his scheme on the defensive side although he said it would be a 3-4 principle defense but with 4-3 concepts as it relates to front down linemen so There'll still be a front four, but it will have three, four principles. So we'll see how that will be interchangeable with this team. And we'll rock it out from there, Cowboy Nation. Post me your thoughts. Post me your concerns down below. Let's continue to find ways to figure this thing out. Shout out to Dan Quinn. I saw his interview. He sounded like he was very assertive. And I can't wait to see how this defense interact with the offense during this offseason to see who will win majority of those snaps. It's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Go Cowboys. Let's go. TJ. <laughs> boy, that boy is tall. He's tall. He's tall. <laughs>